Hi, and welcome back to the Intervention Channel. I'm Steve Bruno, and this is part three of Ultimatums. So we tied off, I tied off part two with a little anecdote about my mother's delivery of an ultimatum. And my point in doing so was to illustrate that an ultimatum can be delivered calmly as a question of self-preservation without any aggression, without any sort of expressed resentment, without making the person wrong, shooting them down, beating them up. And it is worth saying that it is vastly, exponentially more effective to deliver an ultimatum calmly than it is aggressively because if you deliver an ultimatum in anger, then what you do is you instigate, you incite anger on the part of the addict or alcoholic and then he's just pissed at you and is motivating away from you and away from the offer because of how you delivered it. Because how you delivered it in a way that was very invalidating and making him wrong and he's just going to be very resentful and his pride, I'll tell you, pride will take an addict to his grave. And I mean that. An addict, if he feels humiliated and, you know, feels that he, and, and then you just gave him no options, right? You said, you know, until you're ready, you let us know and we're not going to participate in your life. I just had this, this guy have, they, they didn't actually end up hiring me. It was too bad. I, I just had this, uh, this kid do this with his dad. It was very sad. His father, you know, delivered him an ultimatum and he did it very aggressively. In fact, <laughs> the guy at the detox, this is way out of line, the guy at the detox uh, tackled him uh, on his way out. Well, it wasn't, it wasn't out of line in the sense that the, the kid was not in his right mind. And he, so the, the guy at the detox actually meant well. He thought the kid was crazy. But what ended up happening is the important thing. All of that aggression toward trying to get him in is the same, was the same result as the aggression, as the result that you'll find if you deliver an ultimatum in aggression. And what it did is it created radio silence with his dad. He wouldn't speak to his dad. We didn't want to go anywhere near the, uh, the detox. So what happens if you're delivering an ultimatum with anger, you're saying, you know, you need to get out of here. Otherwise, you know, you're cut off. You don't deserve any money. You know, you're not worth it. I've had fathers, in fact, in Cheyenne, I was out there and the dad, we were delivering an ultimatum and the dad gets up. This is against my instructions, against what we had gone over. He reacted emotionally and this, this happens, it's fine. I mean, it's, it is what it is, it's all repairable. Um, he gets up and he gets in the kid's face and he says, um, uh, you know, he, he yells at him, he says, you're a fucking piece of shit. You're never gonna amount to anything. You get the fuck out of my house, get out of here. I don't want to see you again until you're ready to go to the program. All right, that was his delivery. What do you think the kid's response was? The kid pulls a knife out of the kitchen thing. He goes to the kitchen, pulls a friggin' knife out. And uh, I was getting ready to, you know, jump in there. But then he, he says, I'm going to kill myself. And then he runs out of the door. Now, I'm not going to get into that whole story, but suffice to say, we, you know, we had to call the police at that point because I don't want, you know, we don't want a bloodied intervention. And it all worked out. He actually went to the program and it was fine. But, you know, there's, there are ways to handle those types of situations. If you have a situation that you feel may degrade into that sort of scenario, then you probably should call me and ask for a free consultation and some advice on how to, how, how to move forward. But, uh, so you get my point that uh, an intervention, I mean, I'm sorry, an ultimatum should never, ever, ever be delivered with aggression and force. You don't need it. And it is vastly better to deliver it without force because what it does is it, and, and as a question of self-preservation, right? If you don't go, I'm not going to participate. Not if you don't go, I'm going to punish you. I'm going to call your boss. I'm going to, you know, steal your car. I'm going to take the keys to your car, that kind of thing. That's punishment. That's a punitive approach. That's a very destructive, at best, uh, you know, uh, uh, 
uh, what do I want to say? Uh, it's not productive. It's counterproductive. It's the word I was looking for. It's counterproductive to do that, to deliver this with aggression, to put a person down, to be angry, but to say just very calmly, you know, I'm not willing to participate, leaves the person literally alone with his choices. And the offer remains undisrupted, you see? The offer having been made has to remain a precious, uh, you know, a precious gift. It cannot be contaminated, it should not be contaminated with aggression, with fighting, with, uh, you know, that kind of thing. The, the offer of help, and you can watch the video on the offer of help, is not a debate about why the person needs to go into treatment. If you're debating why, then you're losing, okay? It's a pitch. You can certainly handle objections, but telling an addict uh, all the bad behavior that he's engaged in and he needs to shape up and you know this and that um, isn't gonna get you anywhere because you're just making the guy wrong, you're uh, putting him down, and again, that's not gonna get you uh, sell any tickets, but if you make it a question of self-preservation, like my mom did, say, look, I can't participate in this anymore, then you're delivering an ultimatum in a way that leaves the person alone with his choices, okay? So, and I remember after I had left my mom's house, I felt very alone. I tried to rail against her, I tried to make her wrong, I tried to frighten her and put her into a panic. You can read about this, and there's actually have videos on this, on brute emotional force. Uh, putting, trying to drive her into a condition of hopelessness, right? You'll never make me go. I'll never go to treatment. You, there's no reason for you to even try because I will never go. Okay, that's an effort on the part of the addict to drive the person he's speaking to, yelling at, into a condition of hopelessness and apathy in order to stop the motion, right? To stop the train from coming. Well, as a professional interventionist, I'm driving the friggin' train and it's coming. So one way or the other. <laughs> okay, it's a little, little plug for me, but, um, uh, and for hiring a professional. You know, if you're gonna run into this stuff, hire somebody, get the help. You know, if you think, uh, you know, doing it on your own is a good idea or hiring some amateur or getting Uncle Larry because he did one intervention on his son that was a failure to get you to help you on your intervention, you know, it's like they say, if you think hiring a pro is expensive, just wait till you involve or hire an amateur. Uh, that will cost you. That will cost you dearly. So get help if you need it. Um, and thank you for watching the Intervention Channel. I hope you have been illuminated. I hope you have found this educational. That's why I've put these videos up, is to help you win the game that you're playing. A game with, where somebody's life hangs in the balance, probably one of the most important games of chess in real life that you will ever play. Um, if you want to buy my book, it's called More Than Hope. There's a whole section in there on ultimatums and all kinds of different subjects that you can uh, learn about. And, um, uh, you know, watch the videos, contact me at stevebruno.com if you'd like. Uh, you can ask your questions in the comments section below and then everybody can see the answer. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So uh, thank you for coming to the Intervention Channel. I'm Steve Bruno and again, thank you for watching.